Today I'm talking about Raze Publica, the new Crusader Kings 3 mod. It attempts to bring back the Conclave DLC from Crusader Kings 2. But does it do it well and should you try it out for yourself? Well let's jump straight in and answer that question. Quickly first I wanted to mention that if you're interested in finding out about new Crusader Kings mods that you might have otherwise missed, consider subscribing. Raze Publica comes with a new bookmark in 1066. All of them are obviously republics, and as you can see, this one will be a senate, you got a council, and here you have an elected ruler. So, I'm going to go in more into them now, but I wanted to mention, you can start any character and turn it into a republic. Now, to quickly demonstrate how you can become a republic, you have to be an independent ruler, which that's why I'm starting as King Malcolm. Go to the decisions tab, convert it to a republic. Now, you need absolute crown authority. And your level of fame must be illustrious or above. Now ignore the purple writing. That's just because I'm in debug mode. So I can give myself the prestige. Now doing this you get the law republican. So that means all your titles will go to your ear. Also every de facto county gains 20 control. And your house gains 2000 respect. Now I'll go more into respect in a minute. But for now just wanted to show how you do it. So once you convert it you will get three different options. Elected rulers, a council and a senate. Now I'm going to go into all three of them now. First off, the Senate. So in a Senate, there's a total of 100 seats. As you can see, I hold 74 out of 100. Now you might be wondering how you earn seats. Well, that is based off the respect. There's only two houses currently voting in this one, but in other nations, there's many more. So you can see I got 4,800. He's got 1,600. So that's why I got 74. And he has the rest. Now respect. So respect is based off the age and prestige of the house head. So most probably you and the renown of the whole family. So that's what decides the whole respect. So I'll decide how powerful and who gets the most votes. So in the Senate screen, you get this little pop up. I can see who has a vote, how many seats they have, all the current laws in effect, proposals, which we have none. We haven't selected one yet. But I'm going to do that now so I can show you how it works. But currently, we have one year each term. So a new election will happen for who will be the head next. To demonstrate this, I'm going to try and change it to four years. So you click a proposal. Now, as you can see, it's in the proposals. So eventually you'll get this pop up Senate in session. Now you have an option of voting yes or no. It shows you who is voting. So who agrees with you and you'll gain they'll gain eight opinion and who votes opposite will lose eight opinion just for five years. Also, it shows you how many vote currently. And you control 32. So basically, whatever way I vote will win. So I'll vote yes. So now it's four years between elections rather than the starting one. So as you can see, I'll go to my succession, Senate. The laws in effect change to four years. Whereas the one year is back down here. Currently, there's more houses that's been added. So it took a couple seconds to update. That's why there's more people in the voting screen. So as you can see, it gets plus eight opinion of me because we voted the same. If I can find the person who voted against, minus eight. So that's all I'm going to mention about the Senate. Next up, we have the council. So as you can see with the council, it's made up of the five most powerful families. Now with the Republic, the most powerful family is Electi, which you can see here. So this house is Electi, is Gregory. So if they become the most powerful family at election time, they he will become the leader of the Republic. Whereas now I'm the most powerful family and I'm the Electi. Now, the screen is a little bit different here, but it all works out about the same. I'll get into this in a minute. Basically, just like the Senate, you need a majority to pass a vote. But much easier to get your own wake with this compared to the other one, as there's only four other possible voters. I can challenge you, so you can kind of get your own way a little bit more. So, there's a new mechanic I really like, and it's called Appeasement. Based off three different classes, which you can see here and here. So, you've got Nobles, Clergy, and Popular Appeasement. Now, you can change this by speeches, which I'll get more into at the end. And I'm pretty sure the decisions you make can affect this also. So, with nobles, you can get 30% less monthly income, all the way up to 30% more. Now, clergy, similar thing, but piety this time. And last is popular opinion, which is massive tank to development growth and popular opinion. But then the opposite is same for if you make them happy. So I think it's quite important to balance what you might need. Maybe you can't balance them all, but that's fine. You can also just see the buffs here of what you currently get. So I I have plus five opinions, so I, I got them all content. It must be how you start. So they all like me plus five. I think that's all I'm going to mention for the council. The last one I'm going to talk about is the elected ruler. 
The elected ruler type of republic gives you the most control. As the only thing you really have to change and vote on is how long you your term is. So currently it's just life term. But as you can see, you can change it from one year to 20 years. Similar thing as the other ones, you just vote. So a republic election screen will pop up. As, as you can see, we get one vote and three houses have voted yes. So if we vote yes, overall, it will change. So there we are. So instead of a life term, now they step down after 20 years. You can see it's changed there. Similar thing, all the houses, based off respect, just like the other ones. So, at the bottom of the decisions page, you can see a new tab. Give a speech. Now, it costs 200 prestige. It can only be done once every five years. Now, these can be useful as they can help with family relations. And if you remember, from the council, there was the appeasement mechanic. We don't have that now. But if you're playing as a council and you give a speech, you can affect the opinion of you. So you can try and work towards certain buffs there if you want. Now, I really like this as it gives a bit of variety. Considering when I'd done one last time, they all started riots and all attacked me. So you are giving a speech. So I'll skip forward a little bit. There we are. Speech. The city. Now, if I can spend 40 prestige and gain gold, or I can lose 75 gold and improve building time and everything. So, again, super useful. And it will pop up, I think, like three times. Now, military. So I can... Chance of gaining 100 respect and 50 prestige or lose. Or there's a diplomacy one, which is the same result, but I got better chances and better diplomacy, so I can do that. So you can see that went bad, so I lost 100 respect. So another one again. Oh, this is a bad job, but it's repeating, but there is many more. It's not just the same things. So here we are, the end of the speech, 100 prestige. So yeah, like I said, I like this mechanic. It adds a bit of variety. But like I said, only once every five years. Now, the last thing I'm going to talk about is another decision, and it's a coup. Now, this will change you to a feudal government, and you get conf confederate partition law. You also get an army, and your vassals will obviously hate you because I think you're trying to completely get rid of them. Like, you're going to come complete control. So, if you take this step, the republic will fall. Now, you will be at war with, as you can see, your own vassals. So, after you beat them, it's your independence war. So, you enforce demands. And if you go to your succession, you can now see your feudal instead of republic. And it's back the way you already know. Confederate partition. So that's useful to know. Also another cool mechanic. I really like it. So, back to my beginning question. It attempts to bring the Conclave DLC back from Crusader Kings 2. But does it do it well? And should you try it for yourself? Yes, I believe so. There's so much variety to be had within a single mod. It can be used over multiple playthroughs and give you completely different experiences every time. It's only been out for a few days as well, and I'm sure it could come even better with a few updates. Also, I mentioned it's multiplayer compatible, which is a big plus for a lot of people out there, I'm sure. So, this has been Snap Strategy. I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, please consider subscribing for more content on newly releasing mods, so you know which ones to look out for. Thank you, and goodbye.